existing square footage with the existing parking. The applicant offers to attempt to limit occupancy to 170 people. Well, based on their own Dunwoody parking figures, 170 people would require 162 parking spaces. That is 50 spaces under parked. And the proposal allows an increase in the occupancy cap 365 days a year by the use of off-site parking. Relying on off-site parking leases is a weak plan, if not ridiculous. If the leases are lost, the development would still stand. This would place an undue burden upon residents to report violations and the city to attempt enforcing them. Why should Sandy Springs give this applicant special treatment by allowing them to base parking on unenforceable occupancy numbers or insufficient parking day studies? Precedent, even if the applicant's alternate conditions were to be passed, this building will be rendered a white elephant, probably unusable by any other organization without major renovation to restore the basement parking level and decrease the square footage to something acceptable for the site. If approved, this would allow future cases with intensive uses to be treated on a case-by-case -case basis rather than following the technical requirements and intent of our zoning ordinance. This site is already overdeveloped. I cannot emphasize enough that this is not a suitable site for increased density and insufficient parking for any organization. We strongly oppose the expansion of the building and the allowing insufficient parking. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Patty Burns. I represent Round Hill Condominiums at 5400 Roswell Road, Sandy Springs. The neighborhood's taxpayers and homeowners of Sandy Springs request, request that you deny this rezoning application. The staff's opinion of the zoning impact analysis is incorrect because it suggests the proposed use and suitable in view of the use and development of adjacent and nearby property. When looking at the aerial view of the location, seven-eighths of the surrounding areas are residential communities and not office developments. They are directly adjacent to the site and will be adversely affected. The staff also states the proposed use will not cause an excessive or burdensome use of the existing infrastructure. That is streets, transportation, facilities, utilities, etc. The proposed application will render the property 33% more densely developed. This will undoubtedly increase the total traffic entering and leaving the building. Therefore, it will become excessive and burdensome to the existing infrastructure on the adjacent streets and intersections. The applicant provided a chart at the last meeting that a four-story church, 4,916 square feet, will generate 400 daily trips. But at the last planning commission meeting, Mr. Moore mentioned applying a junior college, junior community college model to the classroom calculation portion, as it seemed the best fit for adults coming and going throughout the day. Mr. Moore believes this facility will operate much like a general office and would add more than 708 trips. Uh, daily, sorry. How can 708 trips not be more impactful than 400? We also believe there will be considerably more than 708 daily trips because of the variety of uses in this building. In fact, we were amazed that there were no traffic studies and no mention of traffic on the staff report under wow. parking and traffic. How much more do you have? Um, I have about another minute and a half. And the gentleman behind you, I think I can squeeze the And the lady behind I'm just doing the math in my head here. It sounds like uh, five minutes I covered. Did I just add that up? Okay. Okay, let's go to let's go to five minutes and so okay with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The special public safety impacts of this rezoning are more than parking, trip count, and traffic issues. There will be more negative impact resulting from the limited and dangerous ingress and egress points of this site with no staging areas on these busy roads. Cars entering into the post office driveway from Glenridge must come to a stop and turn left onto the site and yield to the oncoming traffic. As the site fills up with cars looking for limited parking spaces, this condition will worsen. 
If 25 cars arrive at the same time, there will be 24 cars stopped on Glen Ridge Road. Cars entering from Roswell Road must come to a stop and make sure the site is clear for them to proceed right or left into the parking area. Again, 25 cars arrive at the same time, there will be 24 cars stopped on Roswell Road. More cars, more, problem, more traffic problems. It is clearly possible at any time there can be up to 50 cars trying to enter or exit the site. And with the average daily trip calculations, the issue of ingress and egress and the lack of road space for stage in this area will be a disaster. The intersec this intersection is dangerous. It is overused, convoluted, and in a three-way maze with several dangerous corners and limited turns. It's a public safety hazard and will be greatly impacted by the attendance of the applicants quoted 10,000 Atlanta members, not the 100 members reported on their application. They plan to hold classes day and night, seven days per week, with no current restrictions on operating hours. This scenario is reminiscent of the one Greek Trojan horse that was accepted by the unsuspecting city of Troy and after it was within the walls, was multiplied, multiplied by hundreds and then thousands. The applicant has owned this building since late 2005. We have seen nothing but deterioration, neglect of the building, and the, area and the area that it surrounds. At the last planning commission meeting, the applicant led you to believe this issue had improved. Please look at the next two slides of pictures that are dated, stamped. As you can see, this issue associated with the lack of basic upkeep continues. This is disrespectful to the character of our neighborhoods, and as taxpayers and homeowners, we take pride in our homes to live the dream of keeping Sandy Springs beautiful. This is exactly why we voted for a new city and are depending on your committee to protect our neighborhoods. We strongly oppose this rezoning. Letters have been submitted by 16 homeowners and civic associations objecting to this rezoning. We have over 700 petitions from the surrounding neighborhoods that will be severely affected. Most of these letters mention parking and traffic. You have people behind you now. I know. Thank you. You burned up two and a half minutes. Okay, we respectfully ask for denial of this resigning. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Manuel L. Curry. I live at 5425 Glen Ridge Drive, across Glen Ridge Drive from this site. And I've lived in Sandy Springs for 32 years, and I'm representing the Willow Glen Homeowners Association. Because of time, I'm going to just hit some bullet points, and I presume if you have questions, you can ask me later. Uh, the, the main points I want to talk about our density and parking, but from a little different twist. This density proposed is double any neighboring O and I density, and of course far more than double the surrounding high density residential areas. The problem this causes is these offices close by and the residential areas close by all have to get out of their areas onto Rosal Road with one curb cut that's very close to this this site. And so with the increased traffic and the ingress egress issues, it's going to cause a backup. These people are going to have difficulty getting in and out of their neighborhoods, including me, and the office buildings. Concerning parking, the, uh, just three quick points. The alternate conditions uh, proposed by the applicant allow for de determining parking requirements based on occupancy. But the zoning parking zoning ordinance has no provision for determining parking based on occupancy. Everything in the ordinance says parking based on square footage by use. Now the staff has, has alluded to, two, to, to section 28 about why they want to use this occupancy and we don't see how that applies. We do see a section 18 that says the staff can limit parking but only up to 10% below the required amount. And it lists five conditions, none of which this application uh, 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 provides, uh, requires, or, or is consistent with. And so we don't understand how we can just brush aside the parking ordinance that requires double, roughly double the 111 spaces, and say just because there are going to be 170 people of occupancy, which we can enforce.